Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. Now, lately I've been thinking a lot about safe queries. And in my last video, I talked about the safety of the .get method in glide record queries. Now, if you haven't seen that video, highly encourage you watch it. It's coming up in the top corner right now. Now, on the topic of safe queries, it got me thinking about my favorite method to use with glide record, which is add encoded query. And I started to wonder, much like I did with .get, if there's safety concerns, if this variable returns something that we weren't expecting. So first I'd like to investigate what happens when you provide an invalid query to add encoded query. So the setup here is that I'm on my private developer instance and I have many, many incidents that start with the word test. Maybe I'm getting tired about all that junk data and I want to delete it out of my system. Maybe I want to make updates to it. I don't know. The fact is I have 256 of them and I want to run a glide record query and do something to that population of incidents. And then I'm gonna to go to my script and I have a query string already prepared. It's a short description, starts with test equals true. And then I've got a glide record declared and I'm gonna add encoded query, whatever's in my query string variable. And then I'm just make believing that I'm setting some value on these. Perhaps I'm gonna do an update on it. Just for demonstration, I'm not going to actually update or delete anything in my instance. You can try this on your own instance as well. So here I am running the script and I should have updated the... problem there. I actually updated 7,191 incidents. All of them. How did that happen? Well, it appears that somebody typed this in raw. And instead of saying short description, they substituted the T with the F. So this is not a valid query string. And because it's not a valid query string, ServiceNow assumed it wasn't supposed to do anything and went ahead with the query. So line four failed completely, but didn't stop the rest of the script. So just like when we saw with the dot get method, we should always be wrapping this in some kind of if statement to make sure that we've got a return on the query before we actually do anything. Otherwise we can update possibly delete a whole bunch of records that we have no intention of doing so on. Now, luckily glide record gives us a method called is valid encoded query. And that method allows us to test our query string before we actually try to apply it with add encoded query. So in this script, we have the query string. It's the same one from the last script, mistakes and all. Then we have a new glide record and we're declaring a new variable called valid query check and it is going to use the is valid encoded query method on the query string to see if it's true or not. Then if valid query string returns is true, we are going to continue. We're gonna apply the add encoded query and we are going to execute the query. And then we are going to info out the rows return should be 256. And we're going to validate that with the get row count. Otherwise, if the query string is not valid, we are going to info out invalid query string and we're going to return the text of the query. So let's run the script and we get the invalid query string path and it tells us shorf description starts with test. Now there's our problem, shorf description. That should be short description. So I'm gonna fix that and let's run the script one more time. And we have this rows return should be 256. Get row count provide us with 256. So we know that our encoded query is getting just exactly the records that we need. And we get to avert a giant disaster. Hopefully now you understand just how important it is to make sure that when you're using out encoded query, that is actually returning a valid query. If you don't do this, it can be disastrous. Hope you got some wisdom out of this one and I will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the emailed picture here.